So guys, welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project thing the where I read to you people. The book Infinite Jest, a book by David Foster Wallace, uh, published 1996, a pomo masterpiece, or so they tell me, well, um, you know, it's okay, it's alright, anyway, we're on to page 82, yeah, let's get right into it. Page 82. Short, shit in the tall AEC optics man, i.e. in Condenza, whose fierce flat serve and haul ass to the net approach to the game had carried him through MIT on a full ride with stipend, and whose consulting report on high feet speed photoelectric tracking the USTA mucky mucks found dense past all comprehending, found themselves totally simpatico on tennis's X and Exemption, no, it's, why, why why that word, anyway, exemption, it's hyphenated, looks weird. Anyway, from stats tracking regression. Were he now still among the living, Dr. Incandenza would describe tennis in the paradoxical terms of what's now called extra linear dynamics, footnote 34. And shit, whose knowledge of formal math is probably about equivalent to that of a Taiwanese kindergartner, Nevertheless, seemed to know what Hopman and Vandermeer and Bolletieri seemed not to know, that locating beauty and art and magic and improvement and keys to excellence and victim in the prolix flux of match play is not a fractal matter of reducing chaos to pattern, seemed intuitively to sense that it was a matter not of reduction at all, but, perversely, of expansion. The alley... Hmm. Aleatory? Aleatory? Aleatory. Aleatory, which means depending on the throw of a dice or on chance, random. Okay, aleatory. Let's plug that in. Find out where it is. <laughs> ah, but, perversely, of expansion, the aleatory flutter of uncontrolled metastat metastatic growth, each well-shot ball admitting of n possible responses, n squared possible responses to those responses, and on into what Incandenza would articulate to anyone who shared both his backgrounds as a Cantorian, Cantorian, hmm, Footnote 35, continuum of infinities of possible move and response, Cantorian and beautiful because infoliating contained this diagnate infinity of infinities of choice and execution, mathematically uncontrolled but humanly contained, bounded by the talent and imagination of self and opponent, bent in on itself by the containing boundaries of skill and imagination that brought one player finally down, that kept both from winning, that made it finally a game, these boundaries of self. You mean like the baselines are boundaries? Mario tries to ask. Lieber got nine, with a plosive, disgusted sound. Shit likes best of all smoke shapes to try to blow rings, and is kind of lousy at it, blowing mostly wobbly lavender hot dogs, which Mario finds delightful. The thing with shit, like most Europeans of his generation, anchored from infancy to certain permanent values which, yes, okay, granted, may admittedly have a whiff of proto-fascist potential about them, but which do, nevertheless, the values, anchor nicely the soul and course of a life. Old world patriarchal stuff like honor and discipline and fidelity to some larger unit. Gerhard Schitt does not so much dislike the modern O N A N I T U S of A as finds it hilarious and frightening at the same time. Probably mostly just alien. This should not be rendered in exposition like this, but Mario Incandenza has a severely limited range of verbatim recall. 
Shit was educated in pre-unification gymnasium under the rather Canto Hegelian idea that junior athletics were ba was basically just training for citizenship. That junior athletics was about learning to sacrifice the hot, narrow imperatives of the self, the needs, the desires, the fears, the multiform cravings of individual appetitive will, to the larger imperatives of a team. Okay, the state. And that's uh, page 82 of uh, this Pomo masterpiece, which just uh, got all meta. And it was talking about uh, its little clunky exposition. Uh, so, you know, that's that. Infinite jest. I bid you adieu.